If you were to enlarge a person to the size of a city in your imagination, then his or her veins would probably be as wide as a road. Would you be able to find your way if you were put into this body and were expected to visit the ear or any other organ? We who have difficulty finding the exit door in a large building and who ask several others where an address in our locality is probably would never reach the ear. Nevertheless, substances that enter our bodies for the first time are able to find their way without asking anyone for help. Despite being mindless, without willpower, unconscious, powerless, and lifeless. Elements that are necessary for the eye go to the eye. And likewise, elements that belong to the heart go to the heart. How are they able to find their way without confusion? How are these particles able to make this journey, which we are unable to make despite our intelligence? There could be two answers to these questions. One, because these elements are so smart. They can make this journey without asking for help. Two, God Almighty is handling and inciting them. They are all His civil servants and they work through His incitation. Now let us look at some other samples of the proof of divine incitation. We see the movement of birds to different lands when migration season arrives. Birds like bee-eaters, quail, and starlings are able to migrate 7,000 kilometers. A Central European stork migrates 10,000 kilometers and flies 150 kilometers per day. However, the migratory champion is the Arctic Tern that can travel 25,000 kilometers. Yes, you haven't misheard. Exactly 25,000 kilometers. Now think of this. You go out on a trip with your car. An address that is 25,000 kilometers away from you a place that is practically on the other side of the world is given to you and you are expected to go there. You do not have a map, a compass, any road signs to guide you or anyone to ask for directions. You are expected to find and follow the shortest route. Now let us forget about the shortest route and say that we have settled for the longest route. Is it possible for you to complete this trip and find the given address with your intelligence and knowledge? How could it be possible? How can a person who is unable to find the exit door in a large building be able to complete a trip of 25,000 kilometers? then how can an Arctic Tern complete a journey that a human is unable to make? There are two options. One, either this bird is much smarter, more intelligent, and more skillful than a person. Two, or this bird is not completing this journey on its own and is being inspired to do so. It finds its way by means of divine incitation, in other words, inspiration. Which of these options could be true? If we accept that this bird migrates on its own, then we will have to accept that this bird is being more intelligent than a human. 
A creature that can achieve something that a human is unable to do must certainly be smarter than a human. A bat was taken from a cave and was put into a cage that did not allow sunlight to permeate. In addition, the cage was placed 300 kilometers away from the cave. It was later determined that the bat returned to its cave. And here, our question is the same. If this is not divine incitation, then what else can it be? How can a bat find a cave that is 300 kilometers away on its own? Would you be able to find your way back home, which is 300 kilometers away, if they tied a handkerchief on your eyes and expected you not to consult with anyone and not to look at any road signs? A stork that had never migrated before was taken to Italy in a cage and was set free during the migration season. It was seen that this stork had taken the shortest route and, 125 days later, arrived at the same place that its breed had migrated. Now let us put birds aside and look at ourselves. Even when an address is given to us, we often get lost and are unable to find our location. Moreover, when we visit a hospital, we have difficulty in finding the exit door. In addition, if all road signs were removed and we were expected to travel from one city to another, then we probably would not be able to reach there until the end of our lives. Are birds smarter than us or is there someone who inspires them? In that case, by disaffirming God, it becomes possible to accept that one is dumber than a bird. If examples of divine incitation were to be counted, they would never finish. We plan to share with you one last account that we find very interesting and believe will astonish you. By recounting this incident, we will complete this proof. Scientists who study the reproduction of eels had discovered something immensely interesting. When it came time for mother eels to lay their eggs, they would migrate towards the Sargasso Sea, which is south of Bermuda and the northern portion of the Atlantic Ocean. And when they would reach their destination, they would lay their eggs and die there. The migration of eels is one of the most inexplicable and fascinating migrations. Even if eels are born in the Sargasso Sea of the Atlantic Ocean, no adult eel has been caught there because they quickly abandon their birthplace after they are born and swim toward the rivers of Europe and America, where their parents lived. There is no one to show them the way on their estimated 6,000 kilometer journey. And despite having just been born, they are able to find their way without confusion. They finally reach the rivers where they will spend their lives. They live there. And as if a collective agreement has been made, they all swim at the same time from the rivers directly toward their place of birth the Sargasso Sea. There they lay their eggs and the cycle continues in the same way. The interesting part is this. The sea the mother eel came from is the sea that her offspring returns to. And by no means does the offspring go elsewhere. If we do not accept that this journey is realized through God's inspiration then we must find reasonable answers to the following questions. 1. Why do the mother eels participate in such a long and tiresome migration that will result in their death? 
too. Why do they go to their place of birth, the Sargasso Sea, and how do they get there? Or do they have a compass to guide them? 3. How does the young eel know to which sea its mother went and how to get there? 4. Let us say it knows the sea where its mother went and can find its way there. But why does the eel not go to a closer sea and instead chooses to embark on a grueling journey? Why is it so important for the eel to return to the sea where its mothers went? From where did it receive this overwhelming sense of longing to return to its place of birth? We have never heard of a child who was abandoned in the courtyard of a mosque or church, returning to his or her mother's home when they got older. How can a young eel accomplish something that a human who is the smartest and most intelligent of creatures cannot do?